Hey, what's up? It's Saweetie. I'm chilling with Nick here at Hard Knocks TV. Make sure y'all tune in. When they say I'm not hot, all these lies need to stop. Cause I'm icy, wifey. Haters wanna fight me. Never been the one get RP up on a whitey. Keep my hands clean, got some hitters moving shicey. Ask me if I'm rolling with some Gucci, bitch, I might be. So I like to start off interviews with um, imagine if there was a movie made about your life. Mm -hmm. The opening scene is coming in through Hayward and opening into your house, like your childhood home. Mm -hmm. Like, what are we hearing? What are we seeing? What are we smelling? When I was growing up in Hayward, I lived on Tennyson, and we lived in one of the last, like, biggest apartments, I think, in the Bay Area. We call it the dark side and the light side. Like, it was weird. Like, the dark side, like, a lot of crime happened over there. Like, you didn't want to go over there if your partner wasn't going with you. And then the light side, like, it wasn't really, like, it wasn't dangerous. And it was weird because it was literally like a lot of shade and then a lot of light. Hmm. But like, it was like different parts of, the, of our apartment complex. It's called Lord's Tennyson Apartments. But, um, so we had the blinds in the living room, the ones, the long ones that like, if it's like the windows open, you could hear it. Mm-hmm, flapping. Flapping. Yeah, 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 I got those. Um, so you would hear that. You would probably hear, I don't know, like some gangster rap playing. I live with my dad mm -hmm. when I was younger. Do you remember like what artists? Like E-40, like Sprinkle Me, like um, like Tupac. Um, like real, like not mainstream rap. Right. But um, Some bass shit. Like some, yeah, some bass shit. Um, my dad's an amazing cook. So maybe like my favorite dish was like cream and mushroom. Oh, no. Um, and then you feel me like <laughs> our apartment was like a hot box, <laughs> so it was it smelled like that. It smelled like a clean apartment, but with with a with a touch of just that like like dro. You feel mm -hmm. me? Um, my dad, they would like come and play the game, and I'd go like to the back, and he'd put like the towel. You, like didn't your I don't know if like your parents said that, but he put the the, the towels like all the smell wouldn't go like to the other side of the apartment, but that's what it would smell. I would see like my dad and his homies playing like dominoes, and like when I'd be a brat, like I'd go sit on his lap and he'd be like dominoes. I'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, oh, that's a great question. Do you remember like your first musical memory? Um, so my dad said that. Um, Snoop Dogg had this song called Dee Da Dee Da Dee Day. Do you remember that? Uh -huh. So I guess that was my my favorite song growing up because my real name is Diamante. Um, I've never said this in an interview because I don't want people feeling like they can call me this name. <laughs> but my family calls me Dee Dee. So um, when I would hear it, I get like really excited because I felt like he was talking about me. Hmm. But yeah, so that's like I think my earliest musical memory. Do you remember at what point you were like, this is what I want to do? Um, so growing up, my mom listened to like a lot of Foxy and Foxy and Kim. So like I've always been into like rapping female verses, but so growing up, I wanted to be a hairstylist. I wanted to be like a beautician, but music was like the first thing I passionately fell in love with. Like I was like, this is what I want to do. And it just sucked because like not everybody can be a musician. I mean, you can, but like to actually like monetize it mm -hmm. and for it to be a career it's really difficult so i'm very thankful that i'm here today doing what i'm doing you actually went to college mm -hmm. uh why was that important to you honestly it wasn't you know um i was living with my dad at the time my, my, i wasn't living with my mom but my mom would like call me every day and be like you need to go to college and it's just kind of like i was playing volleyball i got full ride scholarships but they were in the midwest i'm a city girl i need to be in the city um, so I, I declined the offers, and then I didn't have a studio to record in. My dad was like, stay home and make a mixtape. <laughs> that's, that's like, that was like his thinking. But um, you feel me? Like, I didn't have a plan, so I needed to go to college. I'm a very productive person. So I was like, I want to kind of leave, leave, leave home. Um, you can't go wrong with getting an education, so I went to school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you started off at uh, SC State, right? And, but you, yeah. but you really wanted to go to SC. I, I heard that like you missed the application or something, or what, yeah, what was so that? Yeah, so I literally applied to the Cal State schools the night before. So I was really late. I didn't want to go. Got into like five of them. Um, I saw that San Diego State had the highest transfer rate to USC. So I was like, I'm gonna go there because if I go to college, I really want to go to SC. Cause it's in LA, you know, it's the best school. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't know about that. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I went to another school in L.A. So Where, where'd you go? I went to a small school called Occidental. Our, our really? president, Obama, went there for, mm-hmm. for a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I actually thought about going to SC because I was a film major, but I, mm-hmm. I want to go to a smaller school. But right. I love SC. I'm just, just pulling your strings. But yeah, so um, I'm glad I went, though. Um, so when I was at San Diego State, I was like, I don't want to be in college anymore. But if I do get into SC, I'm going to, you know, continue. it's been for me. It was like a sign. But if not, I'm just going to move to L.A. and start working on my music. So I got in, so I stayed in school. So music was your plan all along, even while you're going to, to mm-hmm. school. It was always like when I graduated, um, you know, I like making money. So I was like, what industry makes a lot of money? The hospital industry. So I applied. I got like three offers. Um, I declined them all because it just didn't feel right. Like every time I was running away from my dream, like I would just feel sick. Mm. So I was like, I need to just pursue music 100 percent. It's kind of like a bad relationship. You want to like give it your 100 percent. And if it don't work out, then you just know it's not meant to be. So that's how I felt with music. Like I need to go 100. And then if it works, it works. And it did. What do you think originally kept you running away from it when you said you were running away from it? Um, resources. Um, I didn't have a lot of confidence because I don't, I'm not a trendy rapper. So it's like I couldn't find my sound that was appreciated. Hmm. But I feel like all the work and all the writing I've done has paid off because now I finally have my sound. I, like, I wanted my sound immediately. So... Like when I was seeing people like, you know, just do trendy rap, I was trying to do it too, but it just didn't feel right. You know, like, so it was like a just tension, like battling in my mind. Like, I don't know if I can do this. Mm. But, you know, when you've been an older, it's kind of like you got to just do it, you know, go hard or go home. Was there like an, an epiphany moment? Was there a moment where you're like, I'm doing this 100 percent no matter what? Um, after I declined my my um, offers from the hospital. It's kind of like, okay, you just turned down like a lot of money. So you need to, if this is what you're going to do, you need to do it. I was broke. I was living in L.A. I was running rooms off of Craigslist. So the beautiful thing at being at the bottom, and I've, you know, I'm pretty sure a lot of people have seen this before, is you can only go up. So it's kind of like I need to build my brand. Every time I would post a video on IG, I'd get like five or 10,000 followers. So it's just like people are attract are attracted to what I'm doing because of my music so it's like it was that was a great sign for me so I tried to become more consistent with my car raps and I believe Icy Girl was the last one I did hmm. so tell me a little bit about Icy Girl originally that that was a, a rap over Kia's My Neck My Back uh, you have a line on there about uh, looking in the mirror so when I was writing that I was in a room that I had rented off of Craigslist and I was, I had trouble like finishing the rap. So I was like walking around my room and I was like, you know, unhappy, but I was like, I knew that this is, wasn't, this wasn't a, this wasn't me. Like it was just like, it was a phase. So I was looking in the mirror. I mean, this sounds hella corny, but like I was looking in the mirror and I was like, looking in the mirror, I think I fought on about to be. Like, you're not gonna always be this. Like be thankful for what's to come. Like, cause you know, like people talk about state of mind, law of attraction. So I was like, you need to change your mindset. So I was trying to like speak things into existence, which I did. Kendrick talks a lot about looking into the mirror and like on a daily basis, like just kind of like, just looking into yourself and just figuring out like where you want to do. And so when I saw that, I immediately kind of thought of like what he talks about and just being like, I mean, even the new song that he has, who, who wants a hero, who wants a hero, look in the mirror, you are the hero. What gave you that, that confidence to be like, I, I'm here now, but I'm, I know where I'm going to be. I'm knowing myself. I think people need to spend time with themselves. And I feel like people don't do that. I wasn't doing that. It's great to be distracted. It's great to be a, around a, a lot of people. And, you know, being in solitude helped me a lot. Because when you know who you are, you know what you want, and you know what you have to do to go get it. So that's what I did. Like. I stopped going out, I, I cut off like distractions, and I focused. It started to get some traction, people were picking it up. Was there a moment like, okay, I'm on the right path, like I see this, like? Um, I see, girl. When I shot the video for it, that video, it's, so I think it's at 42 million views now. Insane. And, you know, I wasn't expect. I thought I was gonna get like a couple, th- couple like, like 70 or like 50,000, you know? So once I saw that it went to like a million, 
in three weeks, I was like, okay, like, because my manager was like, people are going to, like, love this. I'm like, okay, maybe he's right. <laughs> yeah. Your manager's been in the game for a while, so I yeah, feel no, like... <laughs> he's, yeah, that's Sensei right there. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, speaking of Sensei, I heard that uh, early on you had some uh, some sessions with uh, with Yoda, with, with Dion, with no idea. Yeah, the Yoda, <laughs> oh my gosh, he is like, that man is full of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Can you share some some of the wisdom that, that he shared? You? Shout out to Dion, he got his, his, his ass beaten street fighter last <laughs> night, so uh, anytime he wants him, he knows where to find me. Um, patience. Hmm. When he talks and when he thinks things out like I really value his feedback because like he just sits there he goes like <laughs> do you want to know what he's thinking yeah, yeah and he just like sits there and he goes uh, like he really like thinks and just his action is what like resonated the most with me mm. like you need to Take a deep breath and really think things out. Because when you rush or when you just do things like impulsively, mm -hmm. like sometimes it doesn't create the best outcome. So I think I learned a lot from his actions. Speaking of feedback, uh, you did an interview with, uh, w with my peoples, but uh, I, I felt some kind of way when I was watching it. Because I felt like when, when you, shout out to Ebro and Laura, it felt like as soon as, as that started, it was like prove yourself. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that because you're a woman MC, like people want to give you feedback right away and it's like, oh, this is the way you should do it or like... I feel like that, but on top of that, I'm, I'm really thankful for social media, first and foremost. But I come from Instagram, you know? The people were boxing me into a pretty girl with a lot of followers who's trying to rap. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that was kind of... I feel like that's the perception people had. Um, so I feel like that, that was, you know, an obstacle that, um, that I faced. And is that something you feel like you're, you're still facing or? Um, sometimes, but you know, my EP came out, I got a lot of great, you know, coverage and feedback on it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, I'm really an artist, you know, I write my own music. Um, I'm very hands on, um, even with the production, like I really take my time with this. And that's, this goes back to knowing yourself. I feel like when you know yourself, nobody can take anything away from you. So it's like, you can say whatever you want to say, yeah. but I know who I am and I know I'm talented. Yep. So it's like... So in a, in a moment like that where, where Ebro's giving you kind of like feedback, mm -hmm. what's going through your mind when you're hearing that? Um, so I read this, this book once and um, in it, it says, no man is your enemy but your teacher. So although it may have sound harsh and people have reached out and people are like, oh, like, I feel like they were coming at you and da 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 Like, I'm, when he was doing that, I was really calm. You look calm. And I was really, you know, I took it with a grain of salt, but I feel like it's important to listen to people who have been in the game, because sometimes they do have something to say. It may not be, you know, sugar-coated, but I'm thankful you were honest. Mm -hmm. Like, I'd, I'd rather you do that than be fake. For sure. So, you know, I was just chilling. Not everybody's gonna like what you're doing. This is hip hop, yep. you know? So it's like, it comes with the territory. You're still relatively new in terms of the industry side of things. Mm -hmm. Do you still get nervous like when you walk into an interview or when you do that or are you just kind of um, like... Yeah, I was nervous when I went there because it's like, especially on big platforms, because you don't know what direction they're going to take and you obviously saw the direction they chose to take. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like the internet makes things 10 times harder because it's like not only did you did I get negative criticism for them, their fan base started coming at me. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, although I try to, you know, take things with a grain of salt, I'm a human at the end of the day. So it's just like, although it's entertainment for them and although they're keeping it real, there's different ways you can approach that. But because y'all chose to approach it that way, now people are coming at me with negative, like, you know, energy and comments. But I feel like those things make me stronger. I have this conversation with a lot of people in the industry who've been here for a while. I feel like mm -hmm. we're in an era now where it's hard for artists to grow at a young age because before it's like, okay, you go on a radio show, it goes some kind of way, 
and that's that. And then you move away. But now with social media, it's like it just like it becomes this biggest thing. So it's yeah. like people forget that it's like you're a young artist. Like there's to be a new artist. Like I mean, when I had my first interviews, like. I got criticism on my first interviews. Like we all get that thing when we start, where it's like, okay, you learn like what, how you want to go about things, how you want to maneuver. But now with social media, it's a great thing because your car wraps got you to where you are. So it's that's a good side of, of social media. But on the other side, it's like you have to give young artists a chance to develop, and developing comes with you know figuring out what your your space in and what the lane is. So I have two things to say about that. So just going off of that, like it's hard because everything lives forever now. It's not, it's not a moment in time. Right. It, it's, the lifetime is forever because of YouTube, because of, so it's like people can continue to go rewatch that moment, not to keep reliving it. Mm -hmm. um, two, like people just expect you to be perfect off rip. Like some of the criticism I, I've, I've got, that I've gotten have been compared to greats. And it's just like, how are we even in the same sentence? Like, this is my first project. Like, I don't even feel like I deserve to be compared to them, but it's just kind of like, why are you like putting me down and lifting? Like, I get it, but it's just like, I have so much room to grow. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I understand if you had something, you know, um, reasonable to say, but the fact that you're comparing me to someone who's been doing this for a while, is just kind of like, yeah. I'm, not, like, I'm still learning. I feel like the, the era that you mentioned mm -hmm. early on, we had a moment, right? It was, mm -hmm. it was the Kims, the Foxys, Trinas, Missys, Lauren, mm -hmm. and then for a while, there was kind of a void. Mm -hmm. And then whenever like a woman would start to rise and then another one, then it was always like, oh, it's them versus them. It's like mm -hmm. there couldn't be a room for like multiple women to be popping off. Right. Now I feel like we're starting to see a new wave where it's like, okay, there could be different lanes, like there could be space for multiple women. I guess it's a two part question. One is, why do you think there was an imbalance for so long? Mm -hmm. And then two, do you see it changing? So I, I don't know the answer to the first one. That's a great question because there's no reason why there should have been an imbalance, you know? Um, I never thought about that. Um, two, I feel like because of social media, it has given people like me an opportunity to create our own fan bases, which is why I feel like the, Im the imbalance will, you know, um, eventually, hopefully become cured, you know? So um, I would like to see, you know, more camaraderie amongst the the female rappers because we need an, another la lady, ladies night you know we need like when foxy and kim d jumped on the i don't need no else what's, what's that song called uh, uh, nobody else remix yeah, or, yeah. i don't know but it's dope you know yep. and i feel like more females are starting to realize that sometimes the media is what you know most of the it. times yeah and so it's, i feel like people are starting to like see through these things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh speaking of collaborations on the icy remix you mm -hmm. hopped on with Baylani. Uh, -huh. uh speak a little bit about that and uh how y'all linked up and and what what that's been like we were looking for somebody to hop on the remix and they told me she was gonna do it and i didn't think she was gonna do it only because that girl's popping you know like <laughs> she is a global like you know artist so i'm thinking damn if she does it, like, I'm gonna be hyped. She turned it around, like, super quick, and I fell in love with her verse. Um, she did her thing, and I'm looking forward to more, like, collaborations, because for my EP, I didn't have any. But I'd like to move into a space where, you know, I want to collaborate with more creators, especially female rappers, so. Are there any in particular that, that you're excited about? Um, right now, I've just been, like, really focusing on myself, but, um, I'd love to just do, you know, like another ladies night. Who would you put on, on your ladies night? Oh, definitely like Nikki and Cardi, cause they doing their thing. Mm -hmm. um, I like Cash Doll. Cash Doll just got that energy. Um, There's a lot, I heard you mention Princess Nokia in, in an interview. Yeah, Princess Nokia is dope. Her vibe is amazing. I feel like she's kind of carving out her own lane, which yeah. I appreciate. Yeah, so just, just something like, that girls can vibe to and be like seen in a video together. You have a lyric on the Icy Girl remix. You could have been here uh, sooner if you let the devil sway you. Mm. Uh, can you speak a little bit about what, what that means to you? Mm. 